Hi everybody and welcome to the webinar. So today's webinar, um, while you answer that in the chat poll, I will uh, give you the overview, is we're going to look at managing COVID-19, the Italian perspective. So I'm George Valiotis and I'm the Executive Director here at the European Health Management Association. So I'll just be chairing today and, um, and in a moment I will um, introduce you to our keynote speaker. How we will run the session today is that your microphone will be muted and we just do that to make sure that everyone can hear the speaker clearly. If you've got any questions or any comments, you can chat them into the, type them into the chat box that you'll see at the bottom of your screen. Um, I can see already a few people are, are filling that out, so please do keep doing that. Um, and then um, we're also recording these webinars, so just be mindful of that. And we make these available to anybody who's interested in the information afterwards. You can find information about this webinar and any other ones we've run before on our website there. That's listed under point three. So in terms of today's agenda, we're going to be comparing organizational models of COVID-19 response in Italian regions. We're going to look at the Italian NHS the Ministry of Health guidelines to regions and models of response in Italy, and the methodology and data used in Italy. At the end of that 15 minute presentation, we'll have questions and answers um, with you, the audience, which you can uh, type into the chat. So um, that'll be a, a presentation by Professor Americo Cicchetti, uh, sorry, Cicchetti, uh, so Americo Cicchetti from uh, the Graduate School of Health Economics and Management uh, in Italy. So I'll hand over to him now and he'll start his presentation. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, this invitation, this opportunity. Just say hello to all people that is uh, connected. Um, yes, um, I'm going to show you uh, this uh, initiative that uh, has been taken by our group uh, in, uh, in Rome, starting from uh, the end of March. Uh, before the, the peak of uh, uh, COVID-19 outbreak uh, uh, in, uh, in Italy. Um, uh, next slide uh, is, uh, I think, usable to give uh, a bit of the outline. So uh, really a few remarks about the background, uh, our goals, the methodology and data that uh, we have collected, uh, the evidence uh, structure in three major points and some uh, very few take own messages and I hope that uh, we can uh, discuss uh, later on. About the background uh, is uh, uh, our health system uh, is structured on three levels and actually is a collection of 21 regional health systems. In fact, uh, uh, regional health authorities uh, has all the power and the money uh, to manage uh, 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 their uh, um, healthcare services. Uh, at the central level, uh, uh, the Ministry of Health, uh, in collaboration with the Treasury, is uh, just defining uh, the core benefit package that regions should uh, uh, provide to their citizens. At uh, the lower level, we have uh, a collection of uh, healthcare trust, uh, uh, local health authorities uh, uh, that are providing services to uh, the Italian citizens. That means uh, uh, that uh, every region has a different uh, healthcare system. And uh, in this uh, situation, uh, we uh, started to face uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, outbreak. Uh, next slide, please. Um, our goal, uh, uh, major goal was to really try to understand uh, how the same guidelines provided by the Ministry of Health and the National Civil Protection uh, uh, at the beginning of the outbreak, uh, uh, were applied by uh, Italian uh, uh, regions, uh, and actually uh, to compare uh, the organizational models that they were following uh, uh, to manage this uh, uh, exceptional uh, situation. Of course, it was expected uh, that different regions uh, having different uh, uh, conditions, operational condition, organizational condition could uh, answer in uh, a different manner. Um, and um, also what we have seen uh, was uh, since the beginning uh, uh, different epidemiological situations uh, and uh, uh, the point uh, for us was to really understand using data so uh, try to uh, uh, understand from the evidence uh, which kind uh, of uh, response was given by this situation by uh, different uh, uh, different regions. 
Um, our methodology on the next uh, uh, slide uh, actually uh, was based uh, uh, on, uh, on the analysis uh, of uh, the uh, national indications that actually were provided uh, at the end of February and the beginning of March, March uh, thanks to the activity of the Ministry of Health uh, supported by the scientific task force. Uh, the indications provided by our Ministry of Health were, were to carry out diagnostic tests only giving priority to symptomatic and partially symptomatic clinical cases uh, and mainly uh, those cases coming into the hospital. Uh, organization uh, uh, regions who were asked to increase beds of uh, 50% and 100% more beds for uh, pneumology and infectious diseases uh, beds. And also uh, the establishing of uh, uh, the special continuity care units uh, uh, to face uh, and to monitor patients at home uh, uh, were, uh, uh, were identified and regions were asked to uh, establish this uh, uh, these groups, uh, active monitoring by family doctors and pediatricians were uh, also was also uh, foreseen. Actually, uh, regions uh, could have the possibility of uh, acquire hotels and other properties for inter uh, intermediate uh, uh, care. Uh, next slide, uh, just to uh, uh, give you an idea of uh, the methodology and data, we have uh, structured our analysis in two periods. Uh, the first one was actually the period of the peak of uh, the, the lockdown uh, from March 1st to May 3rd, uh, the 3rd. And the second phase uh, uh, with a different set of indicators uh, from May 4th uh, and uh, you know, arriving at uh, now. We have uh, only used uh, uh, official data uh, from uh, the Italian Official uh, Gazette, uh, Civil Protection uh, and Ministry of Health. And up to now, we have uh, uh, produced uh, nine, uh, different, uh, nine different uh, reports, thanks to a, a multidisciplinary working group made by healthcare managers, public health specialists, pharmacologists, biomedical engineers, uh, uh, health economist and, uh, and so on. So a very rich uh, uh, group of people participating to this uh, effort, actually people coming from different uh, regions. The idea was to uh, arrive to the definition of uh, profiles of response, different organizational models of response. This just to uh, show some numbers that uh, I think that are similar in different countries uh, in terms of general break, uh, uh, we had uh, our peak in terms of uh, um, uh, cases, uh, confirmed cases uh, on April 20. And uh, now, of course, the situation is, in, uh, is going better and better. The testing capacity uh, has been improved, uh, also based on the indication from uh, the Ministry of Health. The kind of healthcare response that you can see on the, the bottom on the left uh, uh, was mainly uh, based at the beginning uh, on the use of hospitals and ICUs beds, but later on, uh, little by little, the vast majority of patients uh, were treated uh, at their uh, home. Um, the hospitals, uh, uh, as you can see on the uh, bottom right, uh, were used uh, mainly in the first phase. And so we had a peak uh, on the beginning of March uh, where uh, almost 80% of people with COVID-19 uh, uh, were uh, hospitalized. Uh, little by little, this percentage uh, uh, is uh, diminished. Now is uh, less than uh, uh, 15%. On the next slide, we uh, can see the, uh, another information that is very important. Uh, uh, the COVID-19, uh, um, the outbreak was very different uh, region by region and the northern part of the country, we had the major outbreak. Uh, on the center of the country, uh, actually, uh, there was a medium low prevalence and very low prevalence uh, was in the southern part of uh, uh, of the country. Um, if, you, if we look also at some data on, uh, uh, on the lethality of the, 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 the COVID uh, was different over time uh, and what we have uh, um, seen 
that the general mortality has increased uh, uh, in comparison with data from 2017 and 2018, actually, for uh, respiratory disease. Uh, um, and is uh, something uh, uh, you know that can confirm how uh, was relevant the uh, presence of the virus and the outbreak of the of the virus uh, in our context. But also you can see a difference uh, in terms of uh, quality uh, uh, for uh, people getting the the, the COVID nineteen in different uh, uh, Italian uh, regions uh, within uh, people with the. Uh, that got this uh, uh, this uh, this illness uh, with Lombardia region in particular at the you know the highest level of uh, mortality uh, due to COVID-19. On the next slide, we uh, are uh, I'm showing uh, let's say our model. Uh, the model was tried to to profile uh, the kind of response provided by regions, uh, looking at five different dimensions. Uh, uh, this dimension were witnessed using specific indicators. Uh, the testing propensity of uh, the different regions, uh, the ability to plan the response, uh, the uh, role of hospitals in managing uh, COVID patients in comparison with uh, patients uh, uh, managed at home, uh, the role and the characteristics of intermediate care and the role, the characteristic of uh, ICT and uh, 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 digital uh, solutions. Um, as you can see, regarding um, in terms of planning, uh, vast majority of regions were able to produce, uh, uh, you know, a contingency plan to manage their own uh, uh, local health, uh, regional health systems. Uh, but it's very clear the diversity of the regions in terms of uh, uh, testing. And in fact, uh, uh, you can see the difference between Lombardia, for example, and Veneto region um, among the regions that in which the, the, the COVID uh, um, had the major uh, uh, outbreak. And this is a, 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 you know, a significant difference in the behavior and the, the choice uh, that different regions uh, made uh, in managing the situation. Another difference can be seen in terms of uh, 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 the percentage of uh, patients hospitalized. On average, during this uh, long period of time, um, the, 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 some regions, uh, let's, let's see, Veneto region, um, had a, a, a tendency, um, in a propensity on uh, in hospitalizing uh, COVID patients much lower than uh, Lombardia. Uh, on the other side, uh, on the left side, you can see another chart in which uh, we can see how much uh, uh, regions such as Veneto, for example, um, has used in a very in intense manner uh, ICUs. Uh, actually, if a patient was hospitalized, the, the probability that this patient went, uh, arrived to the ICUs was higher than in other regions. And this is a typical kind of respon uh, response of uh, um, regions like Veneto. Totally different was the behavior followed by Lombardia and uh, uh, Emilia Romagna or L Lazio. I, in this picture, you can see uh, uh, some of the regions uh, um, that are, you know, show uh, re uh, relevant differences, uh, but beyond of these regions, uh, other regions have had similar behaviors to Veneto or to Lombardia or to Lazio and Emilia Romagna. So, taking into consideration the, these five different dimensions. Uh, uh, we were able to uh, create uh, three different uh, groups uh, of, uh, it, let's say, three kind of responses, three models of response. Uh, the hospital-centered approach, the integrated approach, and the community home uh, approach. Uh, these three approaches were characterized by different approaches in terms of testing, in terms of hospital use, in terms of uh, uh, relevance uh, in managing the outbreak of primary and community care, uh, the role of ICUs uh, and the role of digital solutions. The hospital center approach, of course, uh, is uh, uh, typical of that regions uh, in which the intensity, 
intensity of the use of hospital was higher, uh, more than 40%. The intensity of use of hospital in the regions uh, following a community home approach uh, uh, was characterized by a limited use of hospitalization, then uh, low, uh, less than 20% of the patients were hospitalized, hospitalized on average during uh, this long period from March 1st to May the, the 1st. Uh, the, the food. And as you can see, uh, the, there are differences uh, in the use of primary and community care, in the intensity of use of ICUs, uh, and on the propensity of uh, uh, using digital solutions. Digital solutions uh, such as tel telemedicine platforms uh, uh, were more, uh, has been used more intensively in those uh, regions uh, in which uh, 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 an integrated approach, hospital and community care together were, uh, were used. And uh, finally, testing uh, on the top of this uh, the list. Uh, typically, the community uh, home approach uh, uh, was characterized by the diffuse use of testing in the world uh, regional territory for symptomatic but also for non symptomatic. Uh, uh, patients. Actually, uh, applying this grid, we were able to uh, allocate different regions uh, in these uh, three coaches. And uh, typically, uh, Lombardia uh, and Liguria were the leading regions uh, in applying this uh, model. Emilia Romagna, Marche, Toscana region, uh, they uh, have applied a, a more integrated approach in which the hospital has been used in, uh, uh, in, in tight connection uh, with uh, with uh, uh, community care approach, but also with an intense use uh, of uh, digital solutions. And then the community home approach. Uh, this approach was led by Veneto, but also uh, the autonomous province of Bolzano and Trento were following this uh, this model. Uh, so what we have learned is that starting from data and looking at the data was possible to have to, to identify three different models. Uh, each region was uh, uh, allocated in one of these uh, models and actually what we can uh, see is that uh, the, the model followed by each region was mainly based um, to the uh, specific assets, characteristics uh, of uh, of the of that specific region. So, for example, Veneto, with a strong community network, was able uh, to uh, use that asset to uh, 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 respond to the um, uh, to the outbreak. And uh, what we have seen also it was a progressive convergence uh, toward a common management method uh, that has characterized the, the final part uh, of uh, uh, of the uh, of the outbreak. Incredible. Thank you so much, Americo. That was a phenomenal presentation. And um, I would just encourage everybody, if you have any questions, do put them into the chat box and we will we'll get to them um, as we go on. And Mariko, when we first started talking about the webinar and we had said to you, we keep these very short because we want to give people bite-sized information. What I didn't realize in saying that to you was just how much, how impressive and how fascinating your data is and actually i wish we could have done a whole day workshop with you because every <laughs> single one of your slides i would love to delve into more i, I want to start um so firstly so thank you for that work i mean just really stunning i think that if we were all live in the room you'd have a round of applause of uh, everyone standing on their feet clapping for you because that's that's just exceptional um I, I want to ask you about the, the three models. I've got a lot of questions for you, actually. And again, if anyone has questions, do type them into the, the chat box. So the three models, um, I, I noticed when you put them up on the, on the slide, and maybe Chiara, you can go back to um, the slide that showed the regions listed in the three models. Um, yeah, that's the one. Um, because these, how did they fall into those categories? Because they don't match the map. I was wondering if your model depended on where they were geographically, given that you had a higher uh, infection rate in the north. But that's not how no. this... Yeah, this is an interesting question because uh, actually uh, it's not the, let's say, geographical uh, dimension that can explain uh, uh, the, you know, the, the attitude of the region 
of facing uh, the contagion uh, uh, using one of these three approaches. Uh, but also, is not all, and neither is uh, the, uh, let's say, the, the intensity of the virus uh, that is explaining uh, the kind of response of the region. There is one thing that can explain uh, that why each region was choosing a specific approach and uh, was the you know tradition at the specific assets of the national of the their regional health system lombardia has probably one of the strongest hospital networks in europe not in italy in europe and of course they have used that asset to respond to uh, uh, the uh, the contagion and uh, on the other side veneto veneto has, has invested during last at least 10 years uh, in, the, in building this uh, very strong uh, primary uh, care approach uh, and also a, a nursing home approach. Uh, for this reason, uh, they have followed that uh, kind of, uh, uh, of solution. And so the, the model is coming from the, the kind of assets present in, uh, in each region. So no geographical reason, is the model is not chosen uh, taking into consideration the level of uh, the, 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 the let's say the, uh, an epidemiological uh, motivation okay so it's really a strength-based approach you're looking at what's already working in that region and building on that is that a way to reframe absolutely yes okay you, you mentioned also earlier that um there, there was, um, I was interested in the overall approach that was taken and you had an advisory committee or, or something, I forget the wording that you had. Um, where did that leadership come from? Did that happen naturally and easily, again, using the systems already in place or did this require new critical thinking? I think this was in your first or second slide. Um, no, okay, what I was mentioning in the, one of the first slides was the, the role uh, at the central level uh, uh, of uh, these uh, uh, scientific task force. Uh, all the um, emergency was managed by the Ministry of Health, uh, the Italian C Civil Protection uh, uh, Department, uh, and uh, the scientific task force. The scientific task force made by uh, uh, clinical specialists coming from different uh, clinical fields uh, such as the pneumology, infectivology, public health uh, um, and technical people from the Ministry of Health uh, were proposing the strategy to the Ministry of Health and to the government, okay? And uh, the national guidelines were coming from that group. And the, 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 the government was just, you know, applying uh, uh, using the, the, the technical support of this group. Uh, from our side, what we have done is, was to create a, a group of researchers, um, it was very large, try to understand uh, how that guidelines were applied by 21 regional health services. And actually, the definition of the models were not coming from, you know, uh, let's say, uh, uh, um, an ex-ante approach. But actually, we were able to identify ex post on the, on the base of the uh, evidence that were present uh, and were available uh, thanks to uh, the information flows that were coming from uh, the regions. Okay, I've got a few more questions for you, but I can see a few are coming in the chat box. So, Amerigo, if you have a look at the chat box, you'll see them listed there. The first one's from Silvia Barigazzi, who says, what can be done in Lombardy to strengthen the primary care approach, given that you've got them listed as a hospital-centered approach? Uh, you know, uh, th these are very <laughs> important questions, uh, because uh, what happened in Lombardia, for, in, in my opinion, was... Uh, that there was a, 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 um, a reform uh, under implementation. And probably this uh, COVID outbreak arrived uh, in a moment in which uh, uh, that reform uh, wasn't already uh, you know, uh, 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 implemented. Uh, what is needed uh, probably now is to uh, you know, finalize that reform 
um, in which, uh, let's say, the, the, the hospital part has been implemented and is working very well. Uh, of course, uh, the, the other part of the reform that was, uh, you know, looking to implement solutions to manage chronic uh, conditions and uh, the primary care model, you know, was uh, not completed. So I think that uh, the region now really should, should invest on, uh, 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 on these two assets uh, of, uh, 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 of the ecosystem. Okay, we've got a few more questions. Um, the next one is from Anna Ceccarelli. Um, her question is, although Lazio region had developed a digital solution aimed at monitoring patients at home, as Puglia region did, Lazio used a hospital-centered approach to treat patients, whereas Puglia used a community approach. Are there key lessons that can be suggested to maximize the use of digital solutions? Uh, at first, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, um, the, the different behavior of uh, Lazio and Puglia is the co confirms uh, our idea that every region was using the existing asset to answer the, the COVID. Lazio has a very strong uh, uh, hospital network, and so Lazio decided to use this hospital network. There is the National uh, um, Research Institute for Infectivology. Uh, in Rome, and of course, this is the, the idea. Uh, but on the other side, I think that uh, mm, uh, Lazio, uh, in the case of Lazio, there was um, a propensity, a clear propensity of uh, the healthcare politics to use, uh, uh, to use these, um, the digital uh, approach. There was an investment that, that has been done before and it was very important uh, because uh, uh, Lazio had the opportunity to exploit that investment. It was made uh, uh, a few months uh, in advance. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, I think this is uh, something important uh, to, to, to invest, uh, to start to invest, uh, you know, in, uh, 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 in a moment in which you have no emergency. And this is the difference from uh, Lazio, Puglia and other regions uh, that... Uh, actually have applied uh, also uh, digital solutions, uh, but digital solutions uh, that has been, uh, you know, uh, uh, launched uh, on, on a very voluntary basis. Many, many, many of the solutions has been, for example, financed by pharmaceutical companies as PSP programs. You know, they were very good, usable, of course, but in Lazio and also in Puglia, there has, there has been in the past uh, uh, an investment on this, in this area. Okay, thank you for that. So there's another question from Stephen Wright, and he asks if Lombardia had a strong hospital network, which encouraged the region to focus on its hospitals, was it inevitable that COVID-19, um, with COVID-19, that their system would be overwhelmed? In other words, is there some emerging knowledge of how to carry out regional supply demand balancing, which would optimize the regional response? Uh, I think that we can learn a lot uh, from uh, this uh, the, the situation and uh, also we uh, of course can learn a lot uh, in the use of uh, the different assets of a regional uh, or a national healthcare system. In, in a case like this, uh, of course, we understood uh, that you can have all the, the strongest uh, hospital network, uh, but is impossible, totally impossible to manage the situation if you are not, uh, if you're not, uh, not dedicating uh, uh, sufficient attention to maintain patients uh, in their own places. You need to manage uh, people in advance. Uh, and here the problem probably was to, uh, I mean, the, 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 the delay of the de detection of this uh, patient. Uh, when it's too late, uh, the patients arrive to the hospital in uh, so bad conditions from a clinical point of view that this, you know, makes very, very difficult to manage. Uh, the length of stay is increasing in terms of days. This uh, I, I, has been a huge problem 
because these patients remain in hospital for three, four, five weeks. And of course, uh, that produced uh, this uh, such of, uh, uh, such, uh, you know, uh, problem for uh, uh, Lombardia's hospitals. Okay, so there's, I, I want to ask you a bit more about that. Uh, I'm also just posting a, um, an evaluation question to everybody. Um, if, if participants could please click on that link and fill out the evaluation, it's really important for us to get your feedback on how this session went so we can plan effectively. Um, and Mariko, I just, I wanted to ask then, um, looking at your three models, um, is there going to be plans on how to better um, cross-pollinate them in the future? Is that, do you think that's some of your future of looking at how they can use each other's models and, um, or do you think that the regions will be just sticking to what's familiar to them and they'll just adapt based on that response? Again, this is a good question. My hope is that they can learn each other. But uh, what, what I've seen, uh, we have seen as a group, uh, was that the, the regions were starting to look each other uh, during uh, the, the emergency. But of course, so they were trying to, you know, learn each other, okay? Not officially, of course, uh, but I think that there was this, uh, you know, tendency on uh, uh, trying to converge uh, on a, a more balanced approach in which uh, uh, you have some units dedicated to uh, uh, detect patients in a very, you know, anticipated manner uh, in their homes and then manage only few patients in the hospitals. Uh, but of course, uh, I hope that in the future there will be the opportunity as a country to put together all the regions this, uh, on a discussion on this topic. And we uh, can offer uh, this platform if, uh, if they want. You talked earlier, uh, there's one more question from Federica Zavatada, which I'll come to in a second. And um, we've got time for one more question as well, if anyone has one. Um, Amerika, you talked earlier about these nine reports that were developed by your working groups. Yes. Um, were they progress reports or were they advisory reports? What kind of reports were they? <laughs> we have called these reports uh, instant reports because they were, <laughs> uh, they, they are, uh, um, each report uh, was uh, based on the same set of indicators. And so the, the, there was a continuous update of same indicators and little by little we have modified these indicators. Uh, so these are, uh, um, you know, uh, progress report uh, to be f finalized uh, in, uh, uh, in two major uh, products. Uh, one will be dedicated to phase one to understand, you know, the, the model of response for phase one. The second uh, output uh, will uh, synthesize all the information collected uh, during the second half of the reports uh, to understand uh, the model of response in phase two. So after okay. uh, the, uh, the end of the lockdown period. Are, are these publicly available? Yes, they're so, publicly available uh, in our website. Uh, Great. Um, so Great. Well, we might link to that once we put your presentation up on our site. We'll, we'll point absolutely. people to your website. Great. Um, so the question from Federica, and we have time for one more question after this one, if people want to ask anything else. Um, and also if people want to give any other comment, it really is important for us to get your feedback. So do click on that evaluation link and, and let us know how the session went. And if you have any other comments or concerns, it'd be really great for us to get that. So Federica's question is, Dear Professor, do you think health management university courses will be redesigned in light of the lessons learned? Yes, I think um, we need to. Uh, we need to redesign our, um, our programs uh, because uh, uh, this is an occasion in which we can learn a lot. And um, we, for example, have learned that uh, we need to find different ways uh, uh, to, uh, for example, manage and govern the introduction of health technologies. Uh, we have uh, introduced so many digital solutions, uh, uh, you know, in, in, uh, without any kind of assessment, because the typical HTA approach is too long. It's, it's not timely to manage 
uh, in technological innovation introduction in these conditions. And we need to, for example, try to understand how to change these models and to uh, teach to, to, to the people how to, to, to manage this kind of, uh, of approaches. And then, of course, also uh, uh, for general management, I think that, that there is a, a lot to, 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 to look at. I think what we have learned that is very important to promote, promote uh, uh, more and more the ability to integrate uh, uh, the competencies uh, present, uh, uh, I mean managerial competencies present in the hospital and outside of the hospital. Uh, I think that we need to transmit uh, a different attitude uh, uh, to primary care that uh, probably we uh, you know, are too much dedicated, uh, 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 we are still too much dedicated to hospitals uh, than to, you know, the, the rest of, uh, of the system that is more and more important to face uh, this kind of, uh, of situations. Amazing. That's been incredible. And I, I, really, um, I really want this session to go on a lot longer. I have so many more questions for you. But what I will say is um, we do have a series of other webinars. And in fact, we have one planned on redesigning courses of the future for COVID. So if anybody's interested in learning more about that, um, do follow us and know that every couple of weeks we have another one of these webinars. If you have any other ideas about webinars or would like to comment on this one, please fill out um, the survey that the, the link is, is in, the, in the chat box. It should be an instant link you can click on. If it doesn't hyperlink, if it doesn't look blue and that you can just click on it, please just copy and paste it into your browser. I can see already we've had a couple of replies. So thanks to the people who did that. Um, I also just want to um, say thank you very much to Amerika uh, Cicchetti for the generosity of your time and sharing your expertise. I'm really, as I've, as I've demonstrated, I'm so impressed and so humbled to have you here. I, I also just want to say thanks for the important work you're doing at keeping European citizens healthy and well. And I extend that thanks to actually all the participants for making time to join us today. And uh, we recognize that all of the work that anybody in health systems is doing is critical to keeping our countries running well and smoothly and keeping us all, all of our all of the people of Europe healthy and well. So thanks to all of you for that. Um, if you want more information from us, as I said, we've got more um, um, we've got more information in our webinars, and you can also follow us on social media or join us in November at our conference to, to discuss these topics more. Um, Americo, um, before I switch off, is there any final words that you'd like to say? I would just to thank you for this occasion, and uh, thanks to the people that. Uh, uh, was listening and uh, I hope that uh, uh, we can you know start uh, a collaboration uh, with uh, everyone who wants to you know work on this uh, topic. We are dedicating time uh, and effort uh, really try to uh, learn some uh, lessons uh, from this uh, uh, tragedy that is uh, it was a human tragedy but probably the only positive thing is that, uh, you know, we can learn from uh, our errors uh, and, uh, you know, looking forward. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks again. Thanks everybody for your time. We hope to see you soon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you all of you.